and shoulder in relationship to the body. And here's why. I can't really understand or have full control of the arm unless I've accounted for what's happening with the shoulder, the leg. Because a lot of the control of the arm, the steering of the arm, the stabilization of the arm, is a result of a lot of the rotator cuff musculature, which houses inside the scapula. So two things happen. One is that if my I envision, by definition, your rotator cuff is housed within your shoulder blade. That's the definition of shoulder blade, or a rotator cuff. And if I net, imagine an octopus, if my shoulder rotator comes like an octopus and it swims into a uh, hole, sh swims into a shell, that's the rotator cuff sitting inside the scapula. Does that make sense? Can you guys see that analogy? And then it has these arms that stick out and steer. Steers the shoulder, compresses the shoulder, moves the shoulder. It doesn't just do one thing, it's a system. It's a part of the whole system, the joint capsule. All of these things all aggregated to movement and stability. The problem is if I suddenly flip the shell over on the octopus, then my rotator cuff is in weak positions. The arms are long and don't work, or they're compressed and they don't work. I can't even tell what's going on. So it looks like weakness is positional condition. My shoulders are in a bad position. I can't function because I can't recruit because I'm in a bad mechanic. We've seen this time and time again. Do this for me. Overextend your back. Now go ahead and make your abs tight. Yeah, you have a low ab weakness there, obviously. Right? Now squeeze your butt. Now get your abs tight. Oh, they're on! God! You're you just activated and cued your butt, right? Active no. What happened was that you couldn't even recruit your abs because you were in that position. This is the same thing that happened with a lot of the musculature of the shoulder. So the first thing we want to do, especially if I have an impingement-like problem, I put my arm to the top of my head and that shoulder is rolling up into the top of the shoulder blade. Doesn't it seem like the first thing we should do is just go ahead and move the shoulder blade out of the way? I'm sorry, let me just get that out of your way. And then it just moves. That seems like a reasonable thing to do. The problem is that we live in a society, and who we are as athletes, where we get a little bit stuck forward. And so now, if I'm stiff through the upper back, if my ribs are stiff, then that shoulder blade, look, his shoulder blade is about 40 degrees out of position. If I sectioned it, it's totally in a bad position. He's still totally functional, he may or may not have shoulder pain. I'm not waiting for that to happen. I know that this is a bad resting position. So look, if I pin him down, don't freak out. Do the Wushu scat grabs, but I shouldn't be able to like Indiana Jones' his heart back here. <laughs> and what's happening is that if I can reach out and can grab the scapula, look at the length of the point turn for us, the length of the, the musculature of the rhomboids and traps, it has to get like two centimeters longer, three centimeters longer. Now it's to pull off axis. No wonder it doesn't work. No wonder we've been telling people forever and ever, you have low trap weakness. I'm like, you don't have a low trap weakness. Your low trap can't even work. It has to pull uphill and it's pulling in its end range. So it seems like it would make much more sense to put the scapula into a position where the low trap can do its job, right? Because what we really need to do is create a staple. Wouldn't that be sick? <laughs> Go ahead. Just release your shoulder. Put your back. No, oh, really. It's right there. Staple it. One staple, one <laughs> stitch. Hand me that pen over there. <laughs> and uh, what we need to do is get the shoulder blade into this position. So the resting static position in my athletes, cultivating this awareness, this ready state, is that his scapula is flat. And when he does this, when he externally rotates the shoulder, oh, we've been telling people to squeeze your shoulder blades together for years, right? Pinch your shoulders. But that doesn't account for what's happening inside the relationship of the arm and shoulder blade. So he externally rotates. And now I can see the rhomboid and trap bulk and mass between the shoulder blades. That's one of the cues that I know he's in a good position. From across the room, you can tell if someone is jacked or unjacked. Now he looks like he's flaccid and his weak socks, right? From the front, look what's happening here. If his shoulder is forward, his pec has to come forward, and then literally has to take a bend and go around the shoulder. This is a real problem. What I want to do in this extra rotated position, oh look, the pec goes into a good position, and have you ever heard of sternum pain from nips from your athletes that talk about sternum pain? Yeah. It's a real phenomenon we see with yeah. young kids. They're like, oh, the dip, it's hurting my sternum. Well, if you're internally rotated, and your pec is way working in a bad position right here, because the attachment of the shoulder on the shoulder of the pec is in this position, as that pec fires, it literally pulls the joints apart. When the shoulder is back in a stable position, and I load my shoulder with vertical forearm when I'm doing a lot of my pressing movements, that pec stabilizes the sternum. As soon as my shoulder blade goes forward, it destabilizes the sternum. 
now I start to have that off-axle sternal load, and I get sternal pain. No wonder you have sternal pain. Your, your big, powerful pecs were pulling that thing apart. Does that make sense? So, actually, right there it is again. There's extra rotation, and I need to make sure that that resting position, my athletes understand what that is. Rib cage in and down. Oh, whoops, lost it again. Rib cage in and down, and then we screw up that shoulder to a good position. His traps are soft, but that's his resting position, head is neutral. Now we can start talking about what's going on. So many of the mistakes we make are just because we adopt habitus problems, we adopt kind of postural problems, and then that becomes the default. Does that make sense? See if you can find that good position.